All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street School is coming with an updated list of Washington's targeted 2022 draft prospects. This is part two. I already have a part one where I do a deeper dive into more of like an intro of what this is and why I do it. This is part two, so we're just going to pretty much dive right into it. But first of all, RIP Dwayne Haskins, man. That's a crazy situation. I really feel for his family, for sure. And everybody that was close to him. Still his organization, Washington Commanders, everybody it was close to him man. i really feel for y'all heart goes out to all of y'all man but yeah we got to dive into these 2022 prospects because since the last time i did a video there was a huge wave of more prospects that were reported and scheduled and on i got more updated more accurate information on certain guys that i already had on the list from the part one so i'm gonna update y'all on that so i'm gonna update y'all on all of that and of course now that we have a nice long list of names we can actually dive into certain things like what are our biggest needs and what's the highest pick that a player of each position is projected to go and does that say how much we're going to prioritize certain needs you'll see what i'm talking about if you were here last year you already know but for everybody that's new y'all are gonna see we're gonna dive into that but before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one like I've been telling y'all in videos man the content is coming I'm working on a film session immediately after this for my channel members so everybody in the general public is getting this video as soon as I'm done editing it and then immediately afterwards my channel members will be getting a special film session only they have access to so if you're not a channel member go become one because I'm doing those film sessions often and as we get close to the draft I'm gonna start doing them daily and without further ado man let's get it All right, so last time there weren't enough names to actually pay attention to this section. And just real quick, as you see at the top, we're going off of the Draft Network's consensus big board, like I explained pretty much in every video. I'm not gonna do a deep dive like I did in part one, but just for those of y'all who may not have seen part one, even though I do suggest it, because again, I do a deep dive explaining all of this and why I'm doing it. But just to let you know, it's color coordinated when we get to the list of players, as you can see right here. This is based on the Draft Network's consensus big board, which is like an accumulation of several analysts. This is a large amount of them. I think it's like dozens of them, and they come up with a big big board so even though i don't necessarily agree with the big board 100 this is pretty much as consistent and dependable as it's gonna get because it's not just one person's big board this is like a large group of people and their big board so i just feel like this would be the most dependable even though there's gonna be no completely accurate big board but i do trust the draft network so i'm cool with using this but unlike last video this time we can actually start to look at this and see what's really going on because based off of suggested biggest needs, we have six quarterbacks, five running backs, four receivers, four linebackers, three safeties, three offensive tackles, two interior offensive linemen, two edge rushes, one tight end, one corner, and one interior defensive lineman. Out of the list of prospects that we're interested in, we're linked to, we're bringing them in for visits, we talk to them at the combine, pro day, all of that type of stuff. But then you also got to take into account what's the highest big board because like even though we've only met with one corner, the one corner we met with, and of course, is Derek Steenley. Well, we went to go view him at his pro day and talk to him there as well. So even though it's only one corner and you're like, well, maybe we don't think it's a big need. But then when the one corner that you talk to is a top 10 player on the Draft Network's big board, it changes everything. It changes your view on how much they may prioritize it. Because that means they may, even though they've only interviewed one corner and it may not seem like a big need per se, they may still take one with that 11th overall pick in the first round and just like with quarterbacks i mean they've met with six of them but i still don't think we're going quarterback in the first two rounds unless maybe they trade back and gain some extra picks but i just don't see it i feel like linebacker free safety buffalo nickel my boy kyle hamilton daxton hill at free safety and then like of course like the chad moomas and the darian bevers in the second round and then all of the receivers i just don't see a scenario where we take a quarterback in the first two rounds and after the first two rounds i mean unless maybe carson strong makes it to the third round i don't think it's even worth using a pick on a quarterback at that point because there's a reason he slid that far but running back is a real possibility i mean all the running backs we brought in five of them we're linked to five running backs there may be some real interest
just there. And the highest running back on the big board is at the 31st overall spot. So maybe that lines up and adds up. And maybe that's a serious consideration. Same thing with receiver. We're linked to four strongly linked to one of them chris olave we'll take a look at that and at the same time the highest on the big board is 19 we have pick 11 and pick 47 the guy that you like this 19th overall on the big board is quite likely to be taken with that 11th overall pick because he's not making it to the 47 and even though they've only talked to three safeties or were linked to three safeties the highest one is 17th on the big board maybe they take that guy at 11 overall and i mean this is weird because i feel like tight end is actually a way bigger need than people talk about so far we're only linked to one tight end and that guy is all the way deep down in the 144th big board spot so maybe they're just gonna address all the other needs and try to strike it tight end later maybe try to get them like in the fifth round 144th overall so that's estimated to be round five but we don't have a fifth round pick so maybe we will have to snatch them in the fourth but i think we're gonna find a way to get some draft picks this is arguably the deepest draft in nfl history just based on the pandemic and a lot of guys that would have normally been in last year's draft waited to go into this year's draft so this is literally the largest pool of players that nfl teams can pick from in an nfl draft in nfl history and it probably will be that way forever or at least a really long time so this is like the worst draft to not have a third and a fifth round pick like we do right now now. so i'm pretty sure they're gonna trade back or do whatever they gotta do to accumulate more picks in this very deep draft and then of course for me my biggest needs of course i feel like future franchise quarterback but who knows and then buffalo nickel originally i was like you know middle linebacker is obviously one of our biggest needs but after listening to john com and he basically broke down how buffalo nickel really replacing landon collins is a bigger need because when in doubt we really only run two linebackers on the field at a time the majority of the time anyway like i think it was like 90 something snaps out of 1100 defensive snaps last year we had like three linebackers on the field at a time so i mean that does make sense I still feel like middle linebacker still needs to be addressed. I would have loved to have gotten a free agent, especially like a proven veteran to bring in as well. But clearly Buffalo nickel and I mean, that's really just Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton is the best Buffalo nickel prospect in the draft. So, hey, man, they're not linked to him yet, but I hope so. But that's definitely one of my biggest needs. I still feel like free safety is a pretty big need wide receiver we just need another playmaker opposite of terry mclaurin because we're not sure what curtis samuel got going on tight end really should be higher but i think we're just gonna find a way to finesse it and bring in some solid decent veteran guys after the draft you saw ron rivera spoke about how they approach free agency they wait till after the draft to really go crazy in free agency which i think is completely backwards but that's what they're doing but again like i've spoken about in several videos right now our only healthy tight ends right now going into week one of the regular season in september are john bates and samus reyes and i'm not even sure if samus reyes is ready to actually start at tight end to play in regular season games because logan thomas he's not slated to be healthy week one ricky seals jones went to the giants so we're literally just left with john bates and samus reyes right now which is not okay so tight end is a pretty big need of course guard when you lose eric flowers and brandon sheriff and only replace them both with just andrew norwell that's got to be a need power running back it would be nice to have an early down guy and clearly we value running back so i'm not surprised we need we need defensive tackle depth we lost mad eye and tim settle and haven't replaced them with anybody at least brandon sheriff and eric flowers we replaced them with andrew norwell we lost two guys and replaced them with one defensive tackle depth we lost two guys and have replaced them with zero right now but they may be waiting until after the draft to see what happened maybe go and get a guy like star lutalele who got released because tim settle came to replace him but we're already around 10 minutes into the video let me go ahead and get to the list so now we have Derek stingley jr and the link of this list is in the description so i'm not about to just go through and read every name because it's a fairly extensive list already but just most notably i mean Derek stingley went to his pro day and i i think that is a real possibility that we may take him at 11 i think kyle hamilton i think a top playmaking receiver is more likely but do not write off Derek stingley sliding to 11 and us taking a chance on him because he's immensely talented it's just whether or not you can get him to be consistent and to be healthy but of course the guys we're most interested in i'm just gonna mostly look at times met you have chris olave we met him at the con 
combine pro day and it's been reported that Rivera like literally beeline to Chris Olave at the pro day. He even talked to Ohio State's wide receivers coach Brian Hartline and then Chris Olave came for a visit. So there's clearly way more interest in Chris Olave than Garrett Wilson. Plus Garrett Wilson's probably going higher in the draft anyway. Even though I personally don't love the Ohio State guys as much as everybody else, I think they both have really high floors. So I like them a lot. I'm just more of a Jamison Williams, more of a George Pickens, more of a Traylon Burks guy. But the commanders are really interested in him and if we end up taking him at 11 that's cool that's not a dream case scenario for me for me it's still kyle hamilton maybe jamison williams and of course i'm still future quarterback i would love to get my dog malik willis even though i already know that's pretty much out the window but chris olave and one of those other guys is cool there as well and then the fact that we met up with daxton hill made me so happy because i was really worried we weren't even really checking him out and the fact that we invited him to come to ashburn for a personal visit to talk to him so it sounds like maybe if we miss out on kyle hamilton We'll go and get Daxton Hill. Again, Kyle Hamilton's not up here. But, I mean, you could tell from the leadership on and off the field, they don't necessarily have to meet with him in person. If Kyle Hamilton slides to 11, just because they haven't met with him in person does not mean he's off the big board. I think we would take him. I would hope we would take him. Because, again, John Com reported. And he, John Com only reports pretty much straight facts or things that come straight from the Washington Commanders like Rivera and those guys. He's not like a speculative reporter where he goes off of rumors and things and so the fact that he said that the washington commanders feel like one of their biggest needs going into the draft is buffalo nickel that means kyle hamilton definitely has to be high on their big board even though they haven't brought him in for a visit so hey man just keep that in mind but again chris olave kenny pickett maybe if he slides maybe they take i, I doubt it though. i doubt they take any of the quarterbacks desmond ritter even i doubt it i think the most realistic scenario honestly is either maybe chris olave or daxton hill with 11 and then probably Probably Chad Muma in the second. I can definitely see something. Or maybe if you take Daxon Hill in the first, maybe take John Mechie in the second. I think out of this list, again, if we're excluding anybody off the list and if we're excluding quarterback, of course, because I don't think it's going to happen. I'm trying to think most realistic. I think in the first round, we probably go Chris Olave. In the second round, we go Chad Muma. Again, I'm not a huge Chris Olave fan like that, but it's cool with me. Me personally, out of this list, if I had to go off this list, I think Daxton Hill, Chad Muma makes the most sense. But again, ideally for me, it's Kyle Hamilton and probably Chad Muma in the second for me right now. But I also really like Darian Bevers as well, who they've met with. But I mean, he's slated according to this list to go in the fourth round, but I don't think he'll make it that far. And we don't have a third round pick, so if we want him, probably got to take him in the second as of right now. But other notable players that they've talked to more than once, of, I mean, of course, the quarterbacks, but you have Majai Sanders, Edge from Cincinnati. Maybe that's a later round option for us as depth, even though we need more interior defensive line depth than edge rusher depth but it's whatever they met with maryland safety nick cross athletic freak loads of potential if you don't get kyle helmets on the daxton hill in the first maybe you get nick cross like in the fourth if he makes it that far maybe you don't even take the chance and get him in the second i mean that sounds like a nice draft to me man chris olave even though i don't really want him i prefer jameson williams but i'm cool with chris olave again i'm cool with him Chris Olave in the first, Chad Muma in the second, Nick Cross in the fourth, then Jalen Watermeyer in the fifth. You know what I'm saying? There's something there to that. Jalen Watermeyer and Nick Cross both met with twice, both combine and scheduled visits in Ashburn. So, hey, man, make sure you peep these things. Again, when this list grows, I'm going to add more guys, especially when we start to get more in the undrafted free agent range, because those are going to be very realistic. Because if they're estimated to be undrafted free agents, they go undrafted. We've already used a visit on them. They have a limited amount of visits they can use. So it's quite likely that we bring them in as undrafted free agents. So when you start doing your mock drafts, definitely pay attention to how many times we've met with them, where we've met with them. Is it a visit? Because a visit definitely holds more weight than like a combine combine everybody was there anyway you're gonna talk to guys i mean of course if you have a formal meeting with them that's significant but to like personally fly a guy out to ashburn to talk to them personally face to face that definitely holds more weight and then of course there's like context because of course chris olave says pro day like a lot of these guys say pro day but again ron rivera beeline to chris olave at that pro day he literally went straight to him skip past garrett wilson skip past cj stroud hi all y'all are cool y'all are nice people but where's chris olave let me talk to him personally
family so you got to look at a lot of this stuff in context and really dive deep into how significant everything is but again this list is going to extend i'm assuming we're going to add way more tight ends to this list at a certain point we're probably going to add more receivers um i'm very my biggest surprise right now is the running backs like how high and how many I mean, it would be nice to bring in another running back, but me personally, I'm not taking a running back within the first five rounds. I don't think it's that big of a need. I'm willing to be more patient with Antonio Gibson rather than not addressing free safety, wide receiver, middle linebacker, Buffalo nickel, maybe even corner, interior offensive line, defensive tackle depth, ignoring those needs to take on running back. I don't think it's that serious. It would be nice to upgrade a running back, but it would also be even better to upgrade and bring a starter at Mike linebacker, Buffalo nickel safety free safety specifically receiver all of those different positions we still need defensive tackle depth we still need an interior offense alignment because right now Wes Schweitzer is slated to be our starting right guard which isn't bad but I prefer if Wes Schweitzer was depth and not our projected starter I would love to draft a guy bring a guy in in the later rounds and somehow in training camp he out battles West Schweitzer and becomes our starting right guard. That would be fantastic. That would be a home run draft pick if we can find a guy like that later. And as of right now, the only candidate based on who we've met with is Spencer Burford from UTSA. And again, he's slated to go in the fourth round. So maybe we try to get him in the fourth. And another surprising thing is offensive tackle. Like I like Charles Leno. We extended him. And Samuel Cosme, maybe it's because of injury, but I like Samuel Cosme a lot when he's healthy. So maybe they're considering a later round offensive tackle. If somebody like too talented slides further than they should have, maybe we do take an offensive tackle somewhere in the middle or later in the draft, just in case you have an injury to Samuel Cosme. Because Charles Leno, I mean, he is pretty much never hurt, so I'm not worried about him health-wise. If anything, going into last season, I was more worried about him talent and production-wise, especially after the way Ryan Fitzpatrick got hurt after Charles Leno got beat. But then for the rest of the season, Charles Leno was very solid, very good, actually. So I'm not worried about offensive tackle like that. The only thing I'm worried about is maybe if Samuel Cosme gets hurt again. But I don't want to go into the season expecting that because hopefully it just doesn't happen but it will still be nice i mean I hopefully right as of right now we have 10 million dollars worth of cap space once landon Collins is officially off the books we'll be well into the 20 millions and of course we'll probably try to use some of that to extend terry mclaurin but also man go and get a starter and middle linebacker if you don't address it in the draft go and get some interior offensive line depth get some defensive tackle depth get, go address all of these needs we have that you didn't address in the draft go spend that money man it's not like you can take it home with you Rivera. please go use it but yeah man again the link to the access for this pdf file of this exact list that we just went through both pages both this page and this page all of it's in the same pdf file it's in the link in the description so make sure you go get that if you want to take all day to reference it and really analyze it if you want to use it for your own mock drafts go ahead man that's what i'm doing it for because again like i say pretty much every time i do one of these videos i would be doing this anyway this i'm just that type of person i organize everything in my life like this my favorite scents like fragrances colognes wall plugins all of that type of stuff my everything i'm watching like shows animes movies all of that type of stuff I, my to-do list all of my stuff is organized not exactly like this but in various ways like this so i just naturally do stuff like this in life and so i was gonna do this anyway for myself but i figured man i have a youtube channel i have a platform why not give this out to people so they could use it for their own benefit and it's just really no point in charging people because this is just really public information i'm just organizing it color coordinating it and just trying to put it in a format in a way that's very easy to read and understand and use again for your own mock drafts if you want to so and man i appreciate all of the support man appreciate the view please like this video if you liked it if you learn anything that helps a lot of course shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro Bowl sponsors whose names you scrolling on the screen right now and shouts out to all of my sponsors that's been checking out my film sessions i'm gonna keep getting those to y'all if you're not a channel member go become one so you can get so you can get all of those exclusive film sessions man i'm literally doing one tonight right after i'm done with this video so definitely make sure you go check that out and go become a channel member and of course man i appreciate all of the support again i'll catch y'all later i'm out